Hey everybody, I'll be here. So let me share my screen and let me bring uh, the demonstration part forward. So uh, right now, um, you know, you have seen uh, how the workflow looks like, how you can utilize the technology for visualization, power of the graph databases. So when we come to the implementation of the solution, I think uh, something which stands out technically is to look at the scale and the size and the speed. Uh, at which we have to perform these operations and, and take these graph to production environments. So looking at the data set, we are talking about something like 20,000 petabytes of data would be in the healthcare system by 2020, including these healthcare device, you know, IoT devices, what we wear on our hands. Uh, that brings in challenge of integrating external data sources, which are ever increasing. Some of them are open source, other of them coming from FDAs to third party tools. And then there are health insurance plans, which are on the business side of it, uh, local, multi-state, universal healthcare. Uh, keeping in mind that we are developing all these applications which are feeding into the market trends out there, whether backed by AIs and machine learning, you're talking about direct advertising, targeted content, customer 360. So all these things in mind, the technological opportunities basically lies at, at the size of cleansing of the data, improving the data quality, deduping the information. And of course, there are some legal requirements which we have to you know, adhere to as we make this data public. Uh, not just the PII information, but whatever we show on our website. So with respect to all these things in mind uh, and all the scale that we have uh, you know, looked in the past, it's very easy for us to conclude that healthcare is creating new requirements for the applications that relational technology at least cannot handle. The scale of this information of 20,000 plus petabytes is just huge. And the NoSQL isn't relational to the levels where business value lies in the hidden patterns of unknown data depth. So what does this mean? Uh, this means that even if we are trying to find out some similarity between our patients or some kind of XYZ entities or uh, or, or the prescribers, how many ways in this world can they be related? Uh, they could be related by social media, maybe Facebook friends, maybe living at same address, maybe went to the same colleges, maybe the doctors are prescribing the similar treatments to them. So the challenge with relational and, and no sequels have been that if you are designing the solution around them, you need to find the path which you need to follow. What if we jump through all this data in and the data then the solution itself is able to find out all the end parts which are possible between these entities. So that's only possible using the graph databases where you don't know or you don't want to know what path to follow to find a correlation. The data is in the hidden depth. Taking that into consideration, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through a few demos. Uh, we are going to use some external data set for speed and scale. I'm gonna do some live loading and I will do some real-time analytics, uh, joining two different data sets, and then I will try to take you to some machine learning possibilities also if the time permits. To begin with, let me show you what the solution I have here. Uh, there are very, generally three ways to graphify your world with, uh, with Tiger Graph. You have application layers with APIs, then there is a Linux shell, but this is the most popular one, Visual SDK uh, called Graph Studio. Here you can design your schema, which is technically your use case, uh, which, which is healthcare, any silo, or joining a lot of silos together. Your, your data lies externally, so that has to be brought in, whether using some connector frameworks we have from Spark to XYZ. Uh, and once you do the mapping, the data has to be loaded, it, you need to have exploration capabilities as, as Scott is showing you. And on top of that, you need to write your business logic too. So that's the right queries. Uh, along with that, there are various different administrative capabilities. But what I'm going to do right now, just focus on this use case. Uh, with Graph Studio on the side, what you're looking at here is called a Ferris data set. It's FDA's adverse event reporting system. So anybody who sells drugs in this country has to inform the F2 FDA if something goes wrong with the drug in any part of the world. Let's say somebody has an adverse reaction in Japan, it has to be reported because Takeda sells drugs in the United States or, or you know, any, any other company. 
uh, similarly, the, the US companies and US uh, European companies have to inform to FDA. This is a very much RDBMS data set from last 10, 15 years. Um, FDA has been releasing this in uh, RDBMS format, but we took that data set, we converted each table into nodes, and we imported the information inside our system. So a pharmaceutical company reports a case that has an outcome, patient lived or died, like what is the reported source, hospital or somebody else, what are the reaction to the drugs, maybe, maybe you know, depression or headaches or things like that, uh, who was the patient, what were their demographics, and what sequence drug was given in, because at the time, patient is taking too many drugs, so it's not one or two drugs they are on, whether this drug is a primary suspect. So a lot of this information is over here, and we loaded this data into the system, and if you look at this, we are talking about some 37 million vertices, 132 million uh, edges into the system, which has almost 9 million indications, 5 million therapies. So decent chunk of data is already preloaded into the system. Uh, what can we do with this? Now, I will take you to exploration of the graph in some other demonstration, but let me show you what can this data set be used for. Market intelligence, competitive intelligence, business intelligence, uh, and it can be integrated with your internal systems to do some very smart analytical operation. So let me start with something very basic here, which for us is basic, but takes a lot of time on, uh, on some other systems to do. I'm looking for a drug which is primary suspect from a company Pfizer, and I want top five of them. So as I open this uh, newer window, I'm going to show you the path what we followed. So you say something around 150 million plus entries. I'm going to find pharmaceutical company, all the reported cases, which are primary suspect, as on the purple line, and then I'm going to do the summation, aggregation of all the reported cases on the drugs, and pick up the top five because I'm going to sort them out too. So uh, anybody who is in the technology business knows this is, and even on RDBMS side, this is a very complex operation, and with 200 million entries inside, the sort, sorting itself is a challenging exercise. Uh, nothing is cached in here. This is a live system. No caching involved at the background. Uh, over 200 million records and let me run this query. Based on the rendering on the browser, also based on uh, the internet connection we are on and, and this WebEx which is running, this is probably 60 to 90 millisecond query. Lyrisa uh, and various different drugs, Lipitor, they are here, top five drugs of Pfizer that have been reported in the market for some adverse events and there are some 12,000 cases for Lipitor over here. Uh, it's been ordered, it's been sorted, and it's been displayed to you. That is the sp without any caching. So that's the speed at a scale on which uh, graph databases like Tiger Graph can navigate your path without any foreign key primary key restraint and the, uh, drive the results in a matter of milliseconds. Now I'm going to take it one further, uh, you know, further, and I'm going to say not only show me the top five drugs, but also bring me the top five side effects. You know, we are adding extra hop queries on top of that, what we already have. The results are back, same five drugs. And as you can see, let's go to Lipitor and you would see type two diabetes is a side effect and the count of it too, drug hypersensitivity. So we did aggregation, under aggregation, and then quickly showed you the results back. Now the query time would be probably you know, few, some milliseconds more than what it was uh, earlier. So this is the speed at a scale on which the technology actually operates and bring the results back to you. Uh, one is speed and scale. Another one is how do you take this data inside your system? Uh, it's, a, it's a distributed system. It's a, so if this, we are using the advantage of multi-cores, how about the loading of the data? So I'm gonna extend this use case right now, and I'm gonna show you something <clears throat> you know, joining of two silos together. So as you see, this is the Ferris data set on the right-hand side. And I have joined it with the internal data set 
for the for the NPIs. I will explain this in the next example. And now there is no information inside the system. You see right hand side, it's totally zero. I'm gonna load the data into the system, which is 100 gigabytes. Uh, I'm going to my servers. As you can see, let me very quickly show you. I have three boxes, three different servers, AWS instances, commodity machines. Uh, they have 43 gig, 38 gig, and 38 gig of data. So three servers with three different data sets are going to be loaded in parallel right now. I'm gonna, going to trigger this, and we're going to come back to it during a couple of other demos. Uh, and let me trigger this loading. He's saying the system is getting started. It's a much more complex data set, which is getting loaded from what I showed you. Uh, okay, everything looks fine. Okay, the loading has started. So I'm going to switch back and take you to my slides here. So what I have just done when I started doing this battle loading is that uh, yeah, we, we are loading the uh, complex parallel loads right now. So I have made the system even more complex. I have brought in an extra data set, which is just not Ferris. It's also Medicare Part D data uh, from a healthcare provider. And this is what has happened. I have three boxes, which I was showing you, which are M4, 4X large, AWS instances, 16 cores, 64 gig, 100 gig gigabytes of data set. That include 2 billion edges. And we think it should be finished in less than 15 minutes. So we are showing you power of our system in terms of parallelly loading the data inside. Uh, okay, so let me quickly switch on to the next demo, um, where I will show you the power of the joining of these two different data sets. Um, here we go. This is our test drive where I'm leading you. Uh, test drive, you can see various different data sets and videos. I will recommend you have a look at it. It's a free test drive. And over here, there is a healthcare graph, which does exactly what I'm loading. I have explained you the greener side on the right-hand side. Let's take on the left side of it. Uh, each company has a lot of information in internal silos, uh, and this demo is no different. All these NPI, uh, national provider IDs, uh, they, they, when they file for claim with a healthcare provider, uh, you know, there is money involved. And they also let you know that what are the drugs which have been recommended to these, uh, to these uh, patients. And of course, we can divide the NPIs in terms of the specialities they have, a uh, lot of other information. You can see attributes on top of each node. So if you're thinking in a row column or way, these are the attributes where the attribute goes on a particular node. We know NPI's addresses. Some claims are regular claims. Other claims are opioid claims. So the common point here is the drugs. Now, drugs in the market with the Ferris data set, we know what the side effect is. Uh, over here, we know how the drugs have been getting recommended from the industry, uh, from the various NPIs. So at the drug level, keeping the volumes aside, or how many tablets, or what kind of milligram aside, these are the same drug names. So you can join these two data sets together, and they would perform wonders for you. One is your internal data set, another one is the external data set. And let me show you quickly what kind of data we are talking about here. 42 million vertices, 2 million, 100 million edges into the system. And let's start with what we can do with this prescriber database. Uh, first of all, I want to find what are the top drugs that, sorry, number of specialities. Let's say who are the providers, especially with uh, terms of subspeciality, who are recommending most of the opioid drugs. So if you are looking for opioid fraud or you want some kind of analytics around it, you're gonna start with some kind of very basic operation, which appears basic, uh, but has to churn over a lot of data sets, uh, data sizes and the rows and the columns, uh, what we call nodes and the edges in our system. Let me find out top five specialities that have been recommending the most of the opioid drugs. And as you can see, family practitioners come right on the top here. They have recommended this drug 74,000 times. 
in a, some specific region for which I have the data inside the system. Just see how quickly this aggregation actually happened. And once I have this information, I need to find what are the top side, give me a minute please, what are the top drugs, okay. So for what are the five choices, top five choices, what drugs they are actually recommending, opioid drugs. Name the drugs which have been recommended the most. And as you can see, five drugs over here, oxycotton is one of them, oxycodone is one of them. So these are the top five opioid drugs that they have been recommended. So the basic aggregation, the basic collection, the data science operation, what you do on top of your data sets uh, is so fast. Uh, without creating some any extra indexes, just by the virtue of ingestion of the data inside the graph databases, you're capable of creating very smart, intelligent features for your analytics and your machine learning algorithms. Uh, since we have joined the data set of Paris together with this internal opioid claim data, I'm gonna take this example of even further, uh, taking into what, connecting the available data with the market research. Now, whenever we talk about any side effects of the drugs, uh, we always say, okay, listen, uh, you know, that's a clinical research, side effects come from a re research department, but there are ways to conduct the research on your data from the market, what it is saying. Now, let's, let's look at the example over here, where I'm gonna say, I know what are the opioid drugs are, and this data is getting loaded in here. Uh, and I'm going to say, what are the top five opioid drug side effects because the side effects come from Ferris data set? So here is a query, which is a G-SQL query, as initially Gaurav explained to you. Uh, this is how you code your business logic in our system. Now I'm going to say, show me the top five side effects of opioid drug. How do I know this? Here is the opioid flag. We know what drugs are opioid drugs. We know what is the drug sequence of primary suspect drugs and reported cases, and each case has reactions and outcomes. Very quickly, it will take a little bit more time, sub-second query again, and you know, here are the results. It's mind-boggling. It's a real-time result, and from real market data set. We've been told overuse of opioid means drug ineffective, nausea, pain, fatigue, and headache. Uh, hence proven the, by the market research too, not just by clinical research. Uh, well, of course, clinical research holds way higher value, but in terms of market research, this holds a lot of value for sales, marketing, and business development side of your drug delivery and discovery. Okay, so now let's do the da basic data mining operation, looking for Jacquard similarity based on a reported case, uh, has reactions, so we will find all the similar reactions. Find the top cases which are similar to the case which I just mentioned. So I am running the query here, and if you look at the output of it here, the top five similar cases, and here are the case numbers which are similar to it. As you can see, here is the similarity count. This is 0.2% same to the case which we gave. Now I'm going to take you to another window, and I'm going to show how these things were actually found similar. I'm going to explore all these graphs. I'm going to pick up the similar case number one. So here is the case. Let's find our input case. Here are the two cases. Here's the input, here's the output. Let's expand it. All you're seeing in the green are the reactions, and now I'm going to expand these. Now you can see among all the similar cases why they are similar, because there are so many common reactions between these two reported cases. Now let's dig into that. Asthma, wheezing, coughing, throat tightness. So as you can see, these are overlapping terms based on the Jacquard similarity. That's why this is 0.2% similar. 